I want to buy a copy of Bone Storm. Here's 99 cents. Huh. Allow me to summarize the proposed transaction. You wish to purchase Bone Storm for 99 cents. Net profit to me, negative $59. Oh, oh, please take my $59. I don't want it. It's yours. It, it, it. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time to talk about the November 2021 Marvel Comics solicitations. Nothing quite like DC Comics where it's completely dominated by Batman, but we've got some interesting things happening. We have 70 new comics coming out from Marvel, 14 of which are number one. So that's less number ones than we would have expected from Marvel in the past before the pandemic shut down, and certainly less titles overall. So they're inching back up to their pre-Marvel or pre-pandemic shutdown ways, but they haven't quite got there yet. But we got a lot of exciting stuff happening in November. We have a new Hulk led by Donny Cates and Ryan Otley. We got the new Black Panther relaunch as well. We've also got the Star Wars Crimson Rain thing and Kate Bishop miniseries coming out. We've got the Spider-Man Beyond, a Death of Doctor Strange and Darkhold events going on quite strong. And then finally, we are wrapping up the Infinite Destinies and Infinite infinite infinity score uh, event as well we've also got the end of of chip zadarsky and marco Cicchetto's daredevil run so a lot of big things popping within november 2021 for marvel comics the biggest one is hulk number one this is going to be the first of a six-part uh, story out called mad scientist dotty cates ryan otley taking over certainly it had been quite some time since there was you know really a a Hulk run of note until Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk really sparked interest in the character. The sales blew up. They used a couple of tactics uh, here and there, but the art by Joe Bennett was fantastic. And it's uh, seen as an important, important uh, character again. And that's why you get somebody like Donny Cates coming over from Venom to take over Hulk. And you have Al Ewing moving over to Venom. This is all really good stuff. The solicitation reads, The uncontrollable rage of the Hulk has reached an all-new level, and nobody, including the Avengers, is prepared to handle it. But is it really the Hulk that people should be afraid of? Or is there something missing to this puzzle? Join the superstar creative team of Donny Cates and Ryan Otley as they look to the stars for the next era of Hulk. This is going to be 40 pages, 499, number one issue. I'm absolutely all in. This is my lead pipe lock of November 2021 for Marvel Comics. This will be the most can't miss comic book easily. I have utter faith in Donny Cates and Ryan Otley getting together and making something well worth your five dollars. This is gonna be great. I'm really excited for it. Now, me personally, you know, Ryan Otley came in, they put him on Spider-Man coming off of an of, of Invincible, and it felt like a match made in heaven. It didn't really turn out that way. His art wasn't bad, but it never really felt like Ryan Otley was was shining on that series. I'm hoping that perhaps this this run with Hulk, and it feels like it's going to be less horror than what Joe uh, Bennett and Al Ewing were doing, will perhaps fit Ryan Otley's style a little bit more. He can do a little bit more and gruesome. Obviously, Invincible had some uh, more adult elements than than you uh, would see in other comic books, certainly in Spider-Man. So we'll see if he can go out there and give us that Ryan Otley goodness. I have nothing but confidence in Donny Cates on a character like this. I hope this is a long run. I hope this isn't like his 12-issue run on Guardians of the Galaxy, which is fine. But you could tell pretty early on that it wasn't like a big picture thing, like they're doing with Thor now or with Venom before that, when he was really uh, putting it out there and you could see he had some long-term plans. That's what my personal hope for is, is for Hulk. I hope... I think everybody is going to enjoy this series and definitely go there, put this on your on your pull list. Otherwise, you're going to be very disappointed. There are a host of really cool variant covers. If that's your thing, I personally thought the Peach Pomoko one was pretty damn cute if you're looking for a cute Hulk uh, cover. But there's going to be plenty of variant covers out there for people that like to collect things like that that will fit all of your, your tastes. So that is my lead pop lock of the month. That's what I got to say about that. Now let's get into the rest of the Marvel Comics solicitations in November 2021. We've already talked about Hulk number one. Let's move on. We've got Venom number two, another series that I have high hopes for. This is going to be written by Ram V rather than Al Ewing, who is uh, the, supposed to be the main writer. I find that a little bit odd. Brian Hitch, artist and cover. I really like Brian Hitch. He deserves all the the accolades he can get. The tour de force of comics awesomeness brought to you by the Dynamite new creative team on Venom Continues. 
Venom number one shocked, intrigued, and terrified you with Ram V and Al Ewing weaving a mind-bending story that will push Eddie and Dylan Brock to their limits and Brian Hitch doing some of the most action-packed work of his career. Venom number two will do that and more. Absolutely worth your $4. So this is probably co-written. They For some reason, they didn't add, add Al Ewing's name to the writer credits within the solicitation. My, my assumption is, reading the solicitation, that yes, they co-wrote it together, as had been uh, previously advertised. Next up, we have The Thing, number one of a six-part miniseries. I love The Thing. Thing is one of my favorite characters. Ben Grimm is absolutely a baller in the Marvel Comics universe. I really missed him and, and Johnny Storm together in uh, Marvel 2 and, way, 2 and 1 from Chip Zdarsky. Here we've got Walter Mosley, who I'm not completely um, familiar with, and Tom Riley. I think I've seen his art and actually like it. And renowned storyteller Walter Mosley brings his signature style to a sweeping saga of Yancey Street's favorite son that will range from the urban sprawl of the back alleys of Manhattan to the farthest regions of the cosmos itself. A lonely evening and a chance encounter sends Ben Grimm embarking on a sojourn that will have him encountering and battling figures both old and new. I'll definitely check this out. Even though it's $5 in 40 pages, I like the thing and I'm definitely willing to give it a shot. Here we've got Kate Bishop Hawkeye, just in time for the rollout of the Kate Bishop introduction in the MCU on Disney+. Plus. You can see the character on the comic book looks kind of like um, Jessica Jones from, from Netflix. Certainly more than it looks like uh, Haley Steinfeld. There you go. This is going to be by Marik Nin, uh, Nikamp with Enid Balam on art. If it had a better creative team, I'd probably give it a chance. But even at $4, I'm not going to check this one out. I just The character doesn't really resonate with me. So you'd have to get a good creative team for me to go invest money on a character like this. Just me personally. Now let's get into Spider-Man Beyond. And you're going to see what the impending doom and likely what I'm going to call, I'm calling it right now, clusterfuck that is going to be Spider-Man Beyond with this enormous, what are they calling it, the Beyond Board. Uh, you got to check this out. Here's 78. Kelly Thompson, Sarah Pacelli. And this is Ben Riley's second real outing as Spider-Man pits him against Morbius, and it does not go well. Full support of Beyond gets tested as Morbius puts the, the hurt on Spidey in a big way. There you go. Spider-Man 78 dot B-E-Y. Oh, they're doing the dot stuff. I hate this. I I loathe the, the dot issues. My goodness. And this is Jed McKay with El Eleonoro Carlini. The daughters of the dragon are Spider-Man's trainers, and they're kicking his webby butt. But is even their skill level enough for the mission that Beyond sends them on? Who is the new uh, villain Obsidian Star? And how will Misty and Colleen possibly take him down? five dollars is this this one's only four dollars there you go but i guess it's an extra few pages and then we finally do get to spider-man 79 and this time another writer cody ziggler with another artist michael dowling impending clusterfuck called right here on the channel and, and this was supposed to go to three times a month it's obviously going to weekly because you're getting a dot beyond issue as well at least this one's still dealing with morbius although you're definitely getting some craven the hunter I'm going to be honest. That's a good cover. I, I'm not going to take that away from it. Amazing Spider-Man 80. Once again, Cody Ziggler, Michael Dowling. So at least they got two issues in a row with the same creative team. Craven's trap is sprung and Spider-Man is set into a hallucinatory spiral that will test his sanity like never before. Uh, it feels like his sanity has been tested before. Well, let's not oversell this, but that's another decent cover. Avengers 50. Speaking of clusterfucks. Jason Aaron's Avengers. This time he's going to have Christopher Rucco, Ru, Rucchio, with along with Aaron Cooter, Carlos Pacheco, Ed McGinnis, Javier Garon, and Steve uh, McNiven. Obviously, they put some really good artistic talent on this. So I'll, I'll give them that. This is going to be not only the issue 50 milestone, but the issue 750 milestone. So it is thusly priced at $10, 10 enormous dollars for 90 page, 96 pages of Jason Aaron. I don't care how good the artist is. It can't be worth it. Witness the jaw-dropping conclusion of World War She-Hulk. Nah, I don't think anybody wants to witness that. And follow the Ghost Rider on a quest for vengeance. See, that would be cool. I like I like the Ghost Rider, uh, especially the one that they have in there, Robbie Reyes. But ten dollars to watch to witness the end of World War She-Hulk. Probably gonna pass. 
Captain America, Iron Man number one. I like the cover. We got the Star Spangled Banner with the uh, with the Red Skull. We got some missiles and uh, what looks to be some type of uh, aircraft. Derek Landy, Angel, and Zueta. A government agent turned hider provocateur stages a daring breakout on her way to prison, attracting the attention of both Iron Man and Captain America. When Steve and Tony realize they both have connection to the Slippery Fugitive, they team up to track her down. I don't really know much about Derek Landy. I don't know much about the artist. I like the teaming up of the, the two characters out on an adventure together. I will check it out. Could be great. Could be average. If, even if it's average, it's four four bucks. And I do like seeing Captain America and Iron Man together. So it's a five five issue miniseries. I'll read that one for certain. Giant size Black Cat Infinity Score number one. I tried to get into Infinity uh, Infinity Infinite Destinies Infinity Score. I was reading the annuals, and um, I just didn't think they were good. So I will not be in for Jed McKay, K's, uh, you know whatever is finale to all this stuff with uh, with the new sentient Infinity Stones. Certainly. Well, it's only five dollars, but it still doesn't matter. I didn't. I just. I couldn't get into it. Death of Doctor Strange, Spider Man number one. Jed McKay, Marcelo Freya. This ain't Ben Riley's first rodeo, Spider Man. So well, there you go. You get five Spider Man comics, and this one's five dollars. Death of Doctor Strange number three. Ooh, I like Doctor Doom there. Jed McKay, Lee Garbutt, with no source of supreme Earth is entirely defenseless against Mother. Against the mother, mothers of all mystical threats. Meet the three mothers, the wind. Hey, whatever. I, I'm going to check it out because it's an event. Jed McKay's Moon Knight has churned me. His Taskmaster was abysmal. But Moon Knight so far through two issues is good enough that I'm going to give this one a shot. One I will not be giving a shot to is Death of Doctor Strange White Fox. This is one of those characters that came out of, um, I don't know, that that event that they had that no one, no one knew about or read. Of course, it's uh, it's an Asian female character, so Alyssa Wong has to write it. In Birdo 3 of 4, I'm absolutely going to be be reading this one. Jonathan Hickman's Swan Song on the X-Men brand with R.B. Silva, a match made in he heaven, Jerome Pena cover. I like that, too. This one's going to be $6, but it's, you know, it's 56 pages. That's over a double size issue. And it's uh, Nimrod Strikes. Whatever. It's worth 6 bucks. That's all I'm saying. Phoenix Song, Echo number 2 of 5. Uh Rebecca Ronor's uh, this is spinning out of Jason Heron, Aaron's abomination uh, Phoenix tournament. Who gives a shit? Marvel Voices Heritage number one. I don't read any of the Marvel Voices. I don't really read anthologies unless someone tells me there's specifically something I need to check out. Because I think anthologies for the most part suck. And this one, you know, there's not really any of uh, known talent. So even at $5, it's not worth it to me. Dark Hole Black Bolt number one. I like Black Bolt. But I don't like Mark Russell. There you go. I told Jimmy from Comic Quirks, I was like, don't worry. You like the Fantastic Four. Mark Russell's one of your favorite writers. He will fuck it up for you. And it happened. Dark Hold Wasp number one. Jordi Belair. Claire wrote, nah, I mean, I'm not good. I'm not in for the for the uh, Dark Hold event. Black Panther Legends 2 of 4. Tochi Onobuchi. Setor. I cannot say that name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Setor. Following young T'Challa as he continues on his hero's journey and meets the legendary store. Yeah, they were going to get married eventually. There you go. Black Panther number one. Interesting enough, they don't have a cover for this one. But there are going to be plenty of variant covers. This is the relaunch of Black Panther after the Ta-Nehisi Coates era. I imagine uh, Marvel would like to get on for that. The sales never really materialized after the kind of the, the, the beginning of it, Once, especially once he lost uh, Stealth Freeze as the artist. So we've got John Ridley, Juan Cabal. I, just, I don't think John Ridley is a good comic book writer. He never has been. And I don't think this will be any different. $5. Previous orders will be canceled. So this has been resolicited. So it's been uh, delayed. Academy Award winning writer John Ridley and Stormbreaker artist Juan Cabal launch an all new Black Panther series with an action packed espionage story that would upend everything in T'Challa's life and have ramifications for the entire Marvel Universe. Of course there are ramifications for the entire Marvel Universe. Maybe they will have ramifications in the DC Universe as well. They always oversell this stuff. I'll, pro I'll, I'll check this out. I'll probably actually review it. Actually, I won't because it's the same week that Hulk number one comes out. And that one definitely will be the, the comic I review that week. I'm not reviewing 
two Marvel comics in one week unless you can guarantee me Black Panther number one is good. And I don't think anyone can guarantee me that. Defenders number four or five. Al Ewing, Javier Rodriguez. This is good. I'm I'll, I'm going to keep reading it. It's good. Darkhawk four or five. Kyle Higgins, a uh, writer I really like, but I did not read the first issue and I have no plans on getting in on Darkhawk. Tell me, am I wrong for that one? Was that actually really good? If it's good, let me know in the comments section. Did I miss out on something? I get FOMO. You know what I mean? I don't like getting the FOMO, but I do get it from time to time. Dark Ages 3 and 6. This is, uh, I don't know, with what Tom Taylor's doing at DC Comics, this is becoming less must-read by the by the week. But he his Injustice stuff is okay. I really like his Deceased stuff. This feels way more in line with that than his X-Men Red, Nightwing, Super Bad, sort of Kal-El, you know, uh, X- Wolverine stuff. So... I'm going to check it out. Like I said, I would. And I'm hoping I love it. Ivan Coelho has been, uh, was doing a great job on, on Venom. So good artist. Kazar, Land of the, the Savage Land. Zach Thompson. I don't like this guy. I don't think he's a good writer. Herman Garcia. Yeah, not a good writer. Kang the Conqueror, number four or five. Another thing, I don't like when you split Colin Ke- Kelly and Jackson Lanzig, it doesn't make me think that it's going to be good. Another one that I skipped out on. Should I go back and read? King the Conqueror number one. I decided to, to give it a no-go. Moon Knight has been really good. I love the first issue, and I like the second issue just as much. The Alessandro Capuccio art is fantastic. Jed McKay has won back my affections after absolutely blowing it with his Taskmaster fiasco. And Moon Knight has been absolutely dope. Not the most dope cover, but whatever. Not my fault. Moon Knight's hidden enemy is revealed, but revealed is not the same as caught. And he soon finds Mask beneath the masks as he hunts his way after his new nemesis. He soon finds Mask beneath the mask. Okay. At the same time, Dr. Sturman pierces Moon Knight's own mask and for the first time gets some honest answers. So he's still going to be going through therapy. But I am interested to find out who that dude that's been surveilling him is. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited. It's only $4 because Jed McKay and Alessandro Capuccio love us. Thank you. Hey, Turtles. Eh, I've talked enough about that one. I, I don't do any of these gimmick uh, series either. I'm not into the Marvels. This is absolutely a must read for me. Kill Shot Anniversary Special Number One for X Force, written by the one and only Rob Liefeld. Also does the art with Chad Bowers assisting him on the writing. We got a Major X. We got Deadpool, Cable. We got all these uh, Rob Liefeld original characters so it should be fun celebrating the 30th anniversary of the iconic team creator rob liefeld returns to the characters he introduced three decades ago to tell a brand new adventure featuring these hard-hitting heroes in this special issue the man called cable assembles the combined might of five different x4 squadrons each gathered across various points of time for one final mission to defeat strife once and for all at all costs they should charge eight dollars for this and people would buy it I think they are uh, they're missing out on some money and I'm happy that it's only five dollars because I would I would pay a lot of money for this. I think it's going to be great. Sword number 10. This is kind of low key, like the one X-Men title that I don't really see the praises of, but it would be so good if this thing wasn't tied into every GD event at Marvel Comics is so being held back. So I'm sticking with it, but I'm really frustrated. And that's all I got to say about that. Hellions, this is, you know, now that Daredevil ends this month, Hellions right here is the best ongoing series at Marvel Comics, bar none. This thing is great week in and week out. Even when they bring in a backup artist, the fill-in dude, he does almost as well as Steven Segovia. It's been great. Zeb Wells is, what do we call it? He's batting a thousand on this motherfucker. He hasn't had a bad issue yet. Even his Ten of Swords, even his Hellfire Gala issues of fucking Hellions have rocked the house. That's how good this is. If you haven't been reading it, go back, get the last 16 issues, catch yourself up, and you're going to thank me that you're reading Hellions. I cannot express this any any more excitedly that this thing kicks ass. Feelings are, are hard. Orphan Maker doesn't like uh, feeling the way, feeling that he's not Nanny's little boy anymore. And what more sensible, mature action is there to take... Uh, to take them to storm the fortress of their enemies, the right in a bid to get back in their in her good graces. Before the day is through, there will be some dire consequences. So somebody's going to die. Is he going to bring back the 
the smiley rot bot baby back for nanny that's what it looks like that's what that's in that's what that's insinuating uh, whatever those i don't like those giving covers this thing is guaranteed this four dollars best deal in comic books outside of spot in my opinion x-men the child magneto I just reviewed the first issue. It's um, not quite as bad as I anticipated, but it's a Leah Williams X-Men comic, so it's not good. $5 for Leah Williams X-Men. My goodness. A Wanda Divided Cannot Stand. I think she wrote the solicitations, too. God, that's stupid. X-Force 25. I've kind of just given up on this. I loved the Xeno kind of stuff that they were doing with the CIA and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I absolutely loathe all the the plant-based villains, and they've combined the efforts. I, I hate it. I'm just I'm done with it. I'm surprised this isn't $6 because it's issue 25. That's all I'm saying. New Mutants 23. Nobody's reading that. X-Men 5. I'm definitely still reading this one. We got Javier Pena, so obviously... Uh, Pepe de Raz was just going to do the first few issues to bump a number. Which is, it's just what Marvel does. The X-Men's new nemesis finally makes himself known to them, bringing his creations to bear. Mutants may have conquered death, but their foes are all too living. That doesn't say much, but that's, that's fine. That cover is actually pretty good. Congratulations for that cover. Who's the, who's the cover artist? Pepe the Raz. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. Pepe the Raz cover is actually really good. Marauders 26. Hey, is Iceman going to do more than just proclaim his gayness or his queerness in a, in a comic book? It looks like it. Maybe he's going to be the focal point. But I dropped that a long time ago. Excalibur 25. Hey, they're not charging too much money. There you go. Wolverine 18. So we got Lon Medina in now. You've seen some action in Wolverine, but never quite like this. It's a life or death protection mission as Wolverine goes on the run with his friend, CIA agent Jeff Bannister. This is this is stuff has been cool. I'm glad he's coming back. When a secret surveillance device is discovered, on Krakoa and its owners are willing to kill to get it back. So now that I know Bannister's coming back, I mean, Lon Medina is a, a fine artist. He's, he's not my favorite, but all right. Yeah, I'm going to stick around on Wolverine. X-Men Legends Dub or Die. And this is the Larry Hama Wolverine stuff that they're going to be doing. Fantastic Four Anniversary Tribute number one. So this is the Fantastic Four number one. 72 pages. So it's going to include a couple of issues, right? Yeah, in number in Fantastic Four Annual number three. So this is Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's writing. But all these wonderful artists are all going to do a page each or maybe two pages to celebrate this. Uh, this is something I definitely I want to support. I think this is cool. I haven't always loved them, but I'm definitely supporting this one. It's seven bucks. To me, it's worth it to get a read something as, as cool as this and let some of the, the new creators put a little spin on it and let, let everyone know how much they appreciate Stan and Jack. Fantastic Four Life Story. Ha, the joke's on you, Jimmy. Avengers Tech On. I was supposed to read this. I haven't got to issue one yet. Fantastic Four 38. Uh, She-Hulk with the Fantastic Four. Absolutely classic parry. Amazing Fantasy number five of five. This is this is a sad day. You know, this and Daredevil going away is, is not good for Marvel comic readers. But Amazing Fantasy by Carrie Andrews, the first issue was great. I can guarantee you. Look at the it's a dragon. It's a dragon, folks. Look at that. It's five bucks well worth it, even though, you know, you'd hope it'd be for 40 or 48 pages. Iron Man 14. Iron Man's gonna become a cosmic entity. And Hell Hellcat is still gonna nag the crap out of it. Because he's an absolute pansy now. Behold the birth of Cosmic Iron Man. I think I will not behold the birth. Unless someone tells me it's as awful as I imagine it is. Then I'll check it out. Just so I can make fun of you, Christopher Cantwell. Christopher can't write well. Is that what it is? Black Widow 30, 13. Winter Guard 4 of 4. Shang-Chi. Genis Vale, Marvel Tales number 1. If you're a fan, that's not bad. 88 pages, $8. You get Peter David crisscross. That's pretty dope. Captain Marvel's zero through three. That's pretty dope. That's hard to say no to, isn't it? That's a nice little collection there. Captain Marvel 34, the last Marvels, the last of the Marvels. Strange Academy 13. 
If you have kids and you want to introduce them into comic books, this is the comic that you should be reading from Scotty Young and Umberto Ramos. It's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best things Marvel has going today. And it's one of the really, in the big two, this is about as good as it gets for, for kid-friendly comic books. Thor 19, Donny Cates. Um, it's not as good as when it started out. We'll see what happens with the with this. He can't hold up Mjolnir anymore. This is going to be God of Hammers, uh, the beginning of, of some type of uh, story arc. But we got Nick Klein back. That is absolutely beautiful. His art was fantastic. I'm glad he's back. Mjolnir has gone missing, and nobody, even the powerful eye, eyes of Lady Sip, is able to locate it. So Thor must turn to the last person he wants help from, Odin, from until the... For until the hammer is found, nobody in the realm is safe. Artist Nick Klein is back for the twists and turns, and not every, not even the All Father is ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. This sounds like it's it's getting back in stride. Spider Woman seventeen, Symbiote Spider Man Crossroads five of five. Peter David is absolutely destroying it. He is killing it, folks. Right behind Chip Zdarsky, Donny Cates. Then you got Peter David kicking ass and taking names. In uh, in Marvel Comics, in my opinion, every every one of these little mini series he does, whether it's uh, you know uh, Maestro, Symbiote, Spider Man, whatever it is that they're actually allowing him to do, he absolutely destroys. He's doing a great job. Miles Morales, Spider Man thirty two. Is this? Eh, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not reading that one. Savage Avengers twenty six. The best thing Jerry Duggan's done in quite some time. Although um, I have to admit, this X Men series might be the one. It's better than I anticipated. The first issue was great. The second issue was average. Let's see if he can get it going back. Daredevil 36, the end of an era. We've got uh, Elektra and Matt Murdock on the cover. Chip Zdarsky, Manuel Garcia. Where is Marco Cicchetto? That is so disappointing that he wouldn't be the artist for the final issue. Man, that's sad. Five bucks. After a romance that's blossomed over the last few years in Daredevil, Mayor Wilson Fisk and Typhoid Mary are prepared to tie the knot. I didn't even realize they were together. But in a fashion truly befitting the House of Ideas, calamity is right around the corner, yes. The answer lies in the oversized special issue. If you get uh, no Daredevil issue this year, you must get this one. We'll see what he and Chichetto do after this. I am disappointed Chichetto's not on the issue, but uh, I am glad to know that they're going to continue the work with Daredevil. Is it going to be? Matt Murdock's dead, and it's going to be Electra Daredevil, or is it going to be Daredevils, where it's Electra and Matt as Daredevil together? Which one's it going to be? That's got to be what they're doing after this, right? Warhammer, 40,000, Sisters of Battle. I don't read stuff like that. Alien number eight. This is actually um, it's a pretty decent cover. Obviously, the aliens have landed on Earth. They're on a farm. So that's pretty cool. I know a lot of people hate this. I think I I like all alien comics for the most part, even the bad ones. This isn't the best alien story I've ever read, at least the one that they did before this. Salvador LaRocco's art has been uh, atrocious. And um, but I, I'm going to keep reading it. I don't care. I'm surprised the Predator uh, series hasn't debuted by now. I'm putting that one out there. High Republic. Nobody reads that crap. Well, maybe people do. I don't. High Republic, no. Crimson Rain, number one. So this is the, the Star Wars miniseries. Charles Sewell, Steve Cummings on art. The story that began with War of Bounty Hunters continues here in the second installment of a trilogy that will reshape the history of the Star Wars galaxy during Age of Rebellion, featuring the return of beloved characters, shocking twists, epic feats of the Force, and a story that will reach from Star Wars' darkest underworld all the way to the Imperial Palace of Coruscant. Crimson uh, Rain is a Star Wars saga like no others. I think that's um, that's the lady from the solo movie, right? And it's I like I like the idea behind more bounty hunters. Once I found out it was thirty six issues, I I checked out. That's just me. Five dollars. Star Wars Life Day. Now this is absolutely something I would support if they just put one. It's forty pages. Why do you have? Just let Jody Hauser write it. Why do you have to surround her with with lesser talents, right? Why can't you put like a good Star Wars writer on this? It's Life Day. It's one of the worst, you know, television specials of all time that you're celebrating here. And you don't even bring in a good, uh, you know, I mean, Jody House is a pretty decent Star Wars writer. Other, otherwise, it's like, who are these people? It's disappointing. This is something I would like to support, but I won't because it's five dollars. And it, nah, Star Wars Night D. Nah. Nope. Nah, I'm. I'm I wish I could. I wanted. I wanted those Star Wars books to all 
like kick ass and take names, but that just didn't happen for me. That's your Marvel comic solicitations for number 2021. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Hulk's going to be badass. Venom's going to be badass. You know, we've got the wrapping up of uh, a really good run on Daredevil. We've also got the wrapping up of a little little mini series for Amazing Fantasy. Uh, Hellions is great. That's the best ongoing Marvel comic after this moment. Once Daredevil is released and finishes, Hellions is the best ongoing at Marvel. You also got Strange uh, Strange Academy. So there's a lot of good stuff out there. A few more, obviously, that I would have pointed out uh, during the video. So I think there's more good. There are more good comics from Marvel right now than at DC, and DC is putting out more comics than Marvel. So it's it's a weird thing, you know. But uh, Marvel's got some stuff I'm interested in. Certainly more than DC Comics in November.